Good day Grade 11 welcome to the first lesson in week 2. We're carrying on with learning about working out vectors in two dimensions and today we're going to look at the polygon method. So what is the polygon method? The polygon method, as its name implies, is used when there are more than two vectors. In other words, if there are three or more vectors we use the polygon method. It looks exactly the same as the triangle method in the, in the sense that it's from tail to head but obviously then it's slightly more complicated because we are using more than two vectors. So let's look at an example to get to just get the gist of this. We have three vectors of three newtons at 60 degrees, four newtons at 90 degrees and five newtons at 230 degrees and they act at a point. So let's just draw that and show what is going on. So if I draw the little north-south line, okay, we have three newtons at 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is about here and that is our three newtons at an angle of 60 degrees. We've got four newtons at 90 degrees. So we've got four newtons that's 4 at 90 degrees and we've got 5 newtons at an angle of 230 degrees. 5 newtons at the angle of 230 degrees. So 230 is, if we subtract 180 from that, okay, what do we get? That is 0 and 13 minus 8 is 5, so it's actually 50 degrees past the 180. So it is over here somewhere and that is 5 newtons. Now remember grade 11 is what I said. I do not have a ruler on my little digital pen and pad, so my drawings look terrible, but you do have rulers and you have to have pencils, so I want them beautiful, please. And that is a full 230 degrees. Right. Now that doesn't really help us to determine the resultant, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the polygon method and we're going to start with what they gave us, and they gave us that it was 3 newtons at 60 degrees. Okay, so first let me change color and I'm going to use black for my axes and we're going to start off by drawing the axes every time. So let's start here, okay, and we are going to draw the 3 Newton. So it's 3 Newtons at 60 degrees, so that's an angle of 60 degrees and that is 3 Newtons. Now we're going to start again from the head because remember this is tail to head or head to tail method and we're going to go five, sorry, four newtons at 90 degrees. Four newtons, I'm going to change the color, I'm going to make it red and we're going to go four newtons, that's four newtons at 90 degrees, right? And then we're going to go five newtons at an angle of 230 degrees, but remember we always have to draw our axes first so we can see what we're doing. And let's choose green. So we want 230 degrees, which is going to be more or less down here, and it is 5 newtons. That's 5 newtons. And do you agree the resultant is always drawn from where you started to where you ended? So the resultant is from here through to there and that is our resultant. Now there are two ways we can do this. We can either use a protractor and a ruler and scale and draw it out and then just measure. Okay, that's not a problem. But we're going to look at the more difficult way of doing that because we need to practice that and that is by using components. Now remember in the last lesson I taught you how you could break down any vector into its components and then use those components to find the resultant and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start off with the first vector of 3 newtons going at an angle of 60 degrees and we have that it's got a vertical component or northerly component and then an easterly component because that is 90 degrees. And we're going to work out using, because these are all right angle triangles, we're going to be using SAR Ker Toa to calculate the vertical and horizontal components or the northern and easterly or whichever way he's going of each of these movements, of each of these vectors and then we're going to find the resultant by doing a complete triangle just like we did in the last um, lesson but when last lesson we did a slightly easier example. So we are looking at the right, this blue triangle, this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is 3 newtons, we're using this angle as 60 degrees 
So this is the adjacent and this is the opposite. So if we want the vertical component of the three newtons, what do we want? We've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so that is cos, okay? So if we are working that out, do you agree that we're going to say cos of 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is the vertical of 3 newtons, over the hypotenuse, which is 3. So therefore we've got 3 cos 60 degrees is equal to the vertical component of 3 newtons. And then we get out our calculator and we go 3 cos of 60 degrees and it works out to be 1.5. So therefore, V of the 3 newtons is equal to 1.5 newtons. Don't panic about the fact that I've now written that over there. I just like the fact that I like my answers on the right-hand side and the variable working out on the left-hand side. But you don't have to do that. Now we're going to work out the horizontal component. The horizontal component of the 3 newtons. So this is the opposite and this is still the hypotenuse. So you do agree that we're now using sine. So we're going to go sine of 60 degrees is equal to the horizontal 3 newtons over 3. So we've got 3 sine 60 degrees equals the horizontal 3 newtons and I'm going to pop out my calculator and I'm going to go 3 sine 60 and that's 2.598 so that actually becomes 2.6. So therefore that is equal to 2.6 newtons. Right. Now the red component, I mean the red vector, do you see it is just a horizontal component? There's no vertical component. So therefore the actual horizontal component of the 4 newtons is just 4 newtons and there is no vertical. So we can move straight on to the green. So let's look at our 5 Newton vector. Do you agree we're going down this time? And then we're going back, back, right. And this angle here, the whole of this was 230 degrees. But this bit here from here to here is 180. So therefore that little angle there is 50 degrees. 50 degrees, right. And that's a right angle. So now we've got the vertical component of the 5 Newtons and the horizontal component of the 5 Newtons. Right. So if I look at that now, I again can use my Sokotoa and we're again going to start with the vertical component and we're going to go, but the vertical is the adjacent side again. So we're going to say, okay, fine, adjacent and hypotenuse we have. So again, we're going to use cos first. So we're going to say cos of 50 degrees, let me just write that nicer, 50 degrees, is the vertical of 5 newtons over the hypotenuse of 5. So we've got 5 cos 50 degrees, which equals the vertical component of the 5 newtons. So that is 5 cos 50, and that becomes 3.5. So that is 3.21 newtons equals the vertical component of 5 newtons. And now we're going to look at the horizontal component, the horizontal component. Horizontal again is the opposite side, okay, and we've got the hypotenuse, so again we're going to use sine. So we're going to go sine of 50 degrees is equal to the horizontal 5 over the 5 newtons. So we've got 5 sine 50 is equal to the horizontal component. Okay, so what does that give us? So again, we use our calculator and we go 5 sine 50 and that gives us 3.83 newtons. 3.83 newtons equals the horizontal component of the 5 newtons. Now let's look at how we can get our resultant. So we have to add up all the horizontal and all the vertical components. So let's start with horizontal component. Do you agree that we have got that the horizontal component of the 3 Newtons is 2.6 Newtons, but it's going an easterly 
direction. So therefore, I've got my first horizontal component, and I'm going to draw it up here, is 2.6 newtons. Okay. Then I have, of the red component, I have that this is going across at 4 newtons. That's 4. But the green is going backwards. It's going westerly. And it is going at 3.83. 3 point, oops, that's too long. Three point eight three. Three point eight three. So do you agree that my total horizontal component is going to be, I could work it out as two point six plus four plus minus three point eight three because the three point eight three is going in the opposite direction. So if we pop out our calculator, we have got two point six plus four minus 3.83 and that gives us 2.77 so that means we've got a horizontal component of 2.77 newtons west okay that's a horizontal component now we have to work out our vertical component so we go back to the blue the vertical component of the three newtons is going to be 1.5 newtons in a northerly direction, so it's going to be up 1.5. The red vector, the 4 newtons, is going straight horizontal, so there's no vertical component. But the green vector, the 5 newton vector, is going down 4. It has a size of 3.21 newtons and is going south, so that's longer. So that's 3.21. So if we choose up as positive, then do you agree that the resultant of this would be 1.5 plus minus 3.21? Remember I chose up as positive just to give us a direction. So if I get out my calculator, leave it there, and over 1.5 minus 3.21, I get 1.71 downwards. I get minus 1.71 newtons downwards or south. Okay, so 1.79 newtons is e minus is equal to 1.71 newtons south. Okay, right. So now that I've got all that, I can actually now use these two to actually work out my resultant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase my original drawing and now I'm going to draw what we've been given. We know that our horizontal component of all of them is 277 newtons. That's not west, that's east. Sorry. 277 newtons east. 2.77 newtons east. We also know that the vertical component is 1.71 newtons, newtons south. So we can work out that resultant. And it's very easy. We can just use Pythagoras. So if we want this resultant size, we can go r is equal to the square root of 2.77 squared plus 1.71 squared. Okay, so let's do that on our calculator. So we go square root, shift square root, bracket, 2.77 squared plus 1.71 squared, close the bracket, and we get 3.255, which becomes 3.26. So the resultant vector is 3.26 newtons in magnitude. But we have not finished because what do we need? We need that angle over there. We need always with a vector, you need an angle. So in order to find that black angle there, that is the equivalent, and I'm going to change colors to purple here, that is the equivalent to finding that angle from north down. We want the bearing. So do you agree that's 90 degrees? So if I just look at this little angle here and work that little angle out, 
then I can add it to my 90 and I have my bearing. So we are going to use this side here, the Eastley component, which is going to be the adjacent side. And we're going to use the southerly component, which is going to be the opposite. And we want this angle, so we're going to use tan. So we've got tan of theta is equal to the opposite, which is 1.71 over the adjacent which is 2.77 so again we get out our calculator and we go shift tan bracket 1.71 divided by 2.77 close bracket and that is 31.688 which becomes 31.69 therefore theta is 31.69 degrees but remember that that's just that little angle over there so what do we need to do we need to add 90 to it so that becomes 69 and that's still 6 and a 3 and a 9 makes it 12 so the bearing is 126.69 degrees so we can say that the resultant of this is going to be 3.26 newtons on a bearing of 126.69 newton, uh, 69 degrees. And that grade 11 is how you use the polygon method. You need to practice this because it comes up quite often. Have a great day.